Our next guest is set to leave the safety of the Halifax Harbor for a 4,500-kilometer solo ocean row across the Atlantic to France. Laval St. Germain is joining me this morning. We're talking about Confront Cancer Ocean Row. It's all in support of the Alberta Cancer Foundation. We're so so honored to have you here in studio. We're so excited for your big trip. Yeah, thanks, Ashley. How We've got good North Atlantic weather this morning, that's for sure. How are you feeling about it all? Good. It's been a, it's been a bit of a long haul, a lot of preparation. Um, getting the boat ready is uh, is almost like doing a space shot, I think, all the gear you have to have because you have no chance of coming Absolutely, back. Um, yeah. Well, you, I guess you could turn around and come back, but you have to have everything self-contained for about three months in the sea. So, yeah, a lot right. of preparation. We're going to get to that boat in a little bit because that boat in itself is a whole other story. But let's just talk about, essentially, your adventure resume. It's unbelievable what you've accomplished. So the first Canadian to summit Mount Everest without bottled oxygen. Correct, yeah. You have climbed six of the seven highest peaks, and you've also cycled all the way from the Arctic down to the Klondike. Yeah. Where does yeah. this adventurous spirit come from? I don't know. I get uh, asked that a lot. Um, I, I think it has to do with uh, having parents who uh, really um, uh, promoted uh, outdoor sports and uh, staying fit, especially. Okay. And then National Geographic. I mean, it's cliche, but we always had it around our house. And I remember uh, my dad telling me one day, he said, it looks like you want to go to all these places. You should uh, become an airline pilot so you can travel. And um, so I did. So now I'm an airline pilot for Canadian North here in uh, Calgary and it uh, allows me to travel and do these things. So Here's the thing that you were just showing <clears throat> me on your hand, the three fingers you lost while climbing Mount Everest. What makes you want to keep on going back? Uh, it's, I think it's like anything, Ashley. You forget uh, pain, I think. Um, I remember on the summit day of Everest coming down how exhausted I was and how I wanted to lay down and take a nap and knowing I wouldn't wake up if I took a nap. And I remember th stopping and thinking, I'm going to have to describe this someday, this... this um, this fatigue and this and this pain, right? And uh, you know they say that's why women only have one child because they forget, or they have more than one child because they forget that's pain. Right. right. That's right. And I, and I can't. Uh, when I think back about my Everest day, it was tough, but uh, you, you forget about the pain. And yeah. so let's talk a little bit more about this <clears throat> row then. So describe to me exactly this boat. We got to talk yeah. about this boat because you're going to be out there all by yourself. You have yeah. to bring enough supplies with you to last this <clears throat> entire trip. Mm -hmm. This boat is pretty much what it's going to look like, but you're saying it's, it's not even done yet. They're still working on it, right? Yeah, it, it looks like that now, except uh, all the electronics are being installed right now, the solar panels, that type of thing. So it's built by a company in uh, the southern part of the UK called Rannick Adventures. Uh, that's the guy actually who builds it, Charlie Pitcher, in this pic, uh, in this photo. Yeah. And uh, Charlie's got the world record speed crossing of the Atlantic from the Canaries to Barbados. Uh, Purpose-built ocean roar. That that uh, opening there is the cockpit where I'm going to spend, um, where I'm going to sleep and eat. Wow. And then I row up on deck. So it's made out of Kevlar and glass, fiberglass. And uh, I store everything under the under um, where I'm sitting generally, and in in the back of the boat. And then I just simply row and live off that boat. And if you need a break, is there a motor you can kick in at all, or you have to do it all yourself? No, it's human powered. Yeah, there's, everything. there's no motor. Unbelievable. And you're out there all by yourself. Yeah. I was asking him, like, is anyone going to come out and just check on you every once in a while or anything? Uh, no. Uh, you can follow me uh, with a GPS tracker. People can uh, send me messages via satellite communication. I'll have satellite internet, uh, text messaging, and then. Um, uh, yeah, just um, watch me on your uh, on your computer screen. So let's just talk about the charity. How much are you trying to raise, and why why are you doing this for cancer? So I had always wanted to do uh, an ocean crossing, and um, suddenly one of my uh, good friends was diagnosed with uh, cancer. Forty one years old, three kids, and it kind of causes you to snap. Uh, I lost my father in law to cancer as well, and I think all of us uh, in this room and watching uh, today have people who have been touched by cancer. And I thought. Instead of just um, uh, you know words of kindness and words of sorrow and words of support, uh, I decided I should do something. And because of the notoriety I get from some of these trips, whether it's uh, climbing Everest or skiing the highest mountain in Iraq or or um, rowing across the North Atlantic, that notoriety I thought could be used for something other than my own public speaking career or my right. or my Instagram account or my Twitter account. And I could I could use that to bring attention to Al to Alberta cancer patients, uh, their parents or their uh, their families. Yeah. And um, so we directed the funds, uh, got a hold of the Alberta Cancer Foundation, we directed the funds to the Tom Baker, which is a Calgary awesome. uh, cancer hospital, yeah. and clinical trials. So two specific areas that I wanted the, the funds directed to, and, and I think we can get the most impact out of it that way. It's an amazing yeah. story, Laval. Thanks. We wish you so much luck. When, when actually are you heading out? What's the Probably mid-June. Uh, it depends when the boat arrives. and. 
getting all sorted out, but it'll be, I'm um, guessing around the 15th to the 20th of June, okay. we'll strike off for France. Okay, well, we wish you all yeah. the best of luck. What, what's much. the goal quickly? What's how much you want to raise? $200,000 for the Alberta Cancer Foundation. $200,000, pretty amazing. Yeah. If you want to find out more about Laval and his journey, you can just go to his website. There it is, lavalsaintgermain.com. Laval, thanks again so much for being here.